When reviewing the racing career of Jim Ellis, it's best to start with statistics. Because in three decades in the saddle, Ellis accumulated an outstanding record that modern horsemen will struggle to match. Ellis went into the history books many times. The one achievement that can never be beaten is the record for being the first New Zealand jockey to ride 1,000 winners. He won four premierships and was runner-up three times. A master of the staying races, Ellis's victories during an era of quality riders will forever be envied. The horse skills that made him a winner in the saddle were easily transferred to training. Ellis combined both roles for several years and became the first person to train and ride a New Zealand Cup winner with Golden Souvenir. Leslie James Ellis was destined to take up a career with thoroughbreds. Growing up as the youngest of 12 children in Nightcap Southland, horses were the way of life. Five of his brothers became leading jockeys, trainers or both. Jim rode his first winner while still at school, a point-to-point -point meeting because no one else was available. In 1924, Jim gained an apprentice license and joined the stables of his brother Fred at Invercargill. Fred also forged a wonderful record in jumps races. His victory with Kauri King in the 1918 Grand National Hurdles was to be an inspiration to the rest of the family. The Ellis brothers' affinity with horses came from their father Peter, whose attempts to become a jockey were thwarted by a conservative mother. His sons were given the freedom to establish racing careers that will bring credit to the family. And it was the youngest son who shone the brightest. From the beginning, Alice was noted to have a wonderful sense of rhythm and balance, great judgment of pace and sensitive hands, perfect qualities for excelling in distance races. In 1929, with his first New Zealand Cup in the record books, he went to the Melbourne Cup Carnival with Fred and his wife. They were stabled beside the wonder horse, Farlap. Such was the fuss around the legend, Fred and Jim could hardly reach their horses lining up in other races. Still, they came home with a win, while Big Red had to wait another 12 months to claim the Melbourne Cup. Ellis was in demand from trainers all around the country, and in the mid-30s he moved to Christchurch and the opportunities at Rickerton. Meeting Gloria Barlow meant the move became permanent as they were married in 1938. Professionally, it was a successful move, as it brought Alice rides on champions of the pre-war years, such as Cuddle, who collected a New Zealand Cup and back-to-back -back Auckland Cups. Alice finished the decade as the leading jockey with 491 wins. Another great association was with Defaulter, also a Hall of Famer. Alice seen here riding him to glory in the 1939 Wellington Cup. The horse and rider went to Sydney for the AJC Autumn Plate and a race effort that Alice rated as Defaulter's best, sweeping to victory past Derby Munro in a couple of strides and prompting the racing legacy from the Australian champion of the smile that vanished. The war years reduced racing opportunities and Alice judged the time was right to move into training. He set up stables just down the road from Rickerton and quickly earned a reputation for running a meticulous operation. It became a haven for other champions. This is kindergarten, with son Graham on his back. The Hall of Famer was plagued by unsoundness, yet Alice was able to work him back to health with two victories from two starts. Golden Souvenir brought great success as well. The New Zealand Cup, where he rode and trained the historic winner, was followed by the Wellington Cup. Two horses best illustrate his horsemanship skills. Bo Maris, seen here in a grumpy mood at Rickerton, and Bruce, who the lodge was named after. Ellis was riding Bruce in the 1948 Canterbury Cup and broke a stirrup leather soon after the start. Somehow, Ellis kept control and guided his mount to a narrow victory. In 1949, Jim was in another historic race. He edged out Bill Broughton in July to be the first New Zealander to reach 1,000 winners. Broughton reached that mark a month later. The Canterbury Jockey Club was one of many to offer congratulations and a lasting memory for the proud rider. Ellis put away his silks in 1952, closing one glorious chapter in his racing career while another continued to flourish. 
the gentleman trainer would go on to prepare 79 winners. Most notable of the training victories was with Golden Souvenir's son. Gold Scheme with Neville Selwood in the saddle took the honours in the 1954 Sydney Cup after earlier claiming the New Zealand Cup. But watch Gold Scheme come through. He and Double Blank break away from the rest of the field. Priory and First Century are at the head of the others, but they've got no chance. In a neck and neck struggle, Gold Scheme draws level and heads Double Blank to win right on the post with Priory second to length away third. A great finish to a great race. Problems with asthma and emphysema restricted Ellis's training activities over the final decade of his life, finally passing away in Rickerton in 1971. By that stage, suburbia was laying claim to the Ellis stables. The lane where thoroughbreds practice their race starts is now covered by bitumen and homes. But if race fans look carefully, there is one lasting reminder of the great horseman. The name of James Ellis is forever immortalised in Jamel Place. <laughs>